What's up guys, today I'll be doing my full review on the Diatem Warrior. Back when I got this during the pre-release, I was really impressed with this paddle and I've now used it for several tournaments and I have really, really enjoyed it. But there are a few really important flaws we need to talk about that might make this a deal breaker for you. So let's dive right in. So I won't be covering the general specs of the paddle in this review because I've already covered that in the first impressions. So if you want that information, you can click the video right up in the corner to go ahead and check that out. Since my initial first impressions, I've played two tournaments, one of which was the APP Casa Grande, where I got gold in 3.5 singles 19 plus, as well as second place in 3.5 mixed doubles 19 plus. The second tournament was a local 3.5 mixed with my wife on an indoor court with an indoor ball where we got second as as well. So as you can probably tell, I really liked the paddle the last few months. And there really is a lot to love about this paddle. The handle is one of the things that I really like. It feels very solid in the hand, and it's the same octagon shape as a tennis racket, and it's long enough for me to do a two-handed backhand comfortably. The one complaint I've consistently seen is that people wish it had a thicker grip, and I never really agreed with that until I tried the Carbon 1 16mm, which has quite a thick handle, and the Warrior does feel pretty small in comparison after using that. But this problem can definitely be fixed just by putting some overgrips on the paddle if it's a really big issue for you. One thing I've seen in a lot of reviews is that people think this is only a control paddle, and I actually completely disagree. I think this paddle has more power than it does control. Even though it's 19 millimeter thick, and traditionally, the thicker the paddle, the softer it gets. But that really isn't the case with this one, and that's because of the 3XL core with the Nomex in the middle. That Nomex really helps give this paddle a lot of power when you want to put the ball away. And don't get me wrong, when you're dinking, the paddle still has a lot of control, but it has significantly more pop than a lot of other paddles I've used, which are thinner, like the Vanguard Invicta 2.0 16mm, or even the Gearbox CX-14. Both of those felt like significantly better control paddles than the Warrior did. And on top of that, the Warrior also has more power than both of those paddles. So don't let the 19 millimeter deceive you. One of the things that was most noticeable to me is that my regular serve is fantastic with the Warrior. Even within the first day, it was very evident that my serve was noticeably faster than it usually is. Dinking also feels really good with this paddle, but I will say sometimes for me, I do tend to pop the ball up a little bit higher, or when I'm doing my block shots, the ball goes just a little bit further or up a little higher than I want. And I think that has to do with the Nomex in the middle, especially if you're being attacked, that ball is coming in pretty hard and pretty fast. As far as how the ball feels on the face, it feels really nice. There's very little vibration and feels very soft as you hit. Paddles like the Engage Pursuit, Gamma 505, Gamma 206, Gearbox CX-11, and CX-14 all feel like the face is much harder when the ball hits compared to the Warrior. The sweet spot on this paddle also feels larger than most other paddles I've tested. I think I've only noticed the Electra Model E feeling com pretty comparable in terms of sweet spot. I find that when I'm bouncing a ball around the perimeter of the paddle, it still has quite a good amount of pop, whereas other paddles, when I do the same exact test, the ball tends to die very fast and doesn't bounce very high. So overall, I love the grip, I love the power, and how the ball feels coming off of the paddle face and the sweet spot is pretty large. Overall, everything about this paddle has fit my playstyle really well, but now we need to talk about the cons with this paddle because unfortunately, the cons are pretty bad. The biggest con is the build quality. When the Warrior was released, it actually had issues where the face could crack, and once the face cracked, the edge guard would come loose, and both of these issues happened to my first one, as well as rattling on the inside but I've been told that the rattling is actually just loose glue, which seems to be true, because despite that issue, my first Warrior still plays completely fine. Now, Diadem did send me a second paddle, which has reinforcements in the corners to help combat all the issues that the paddle was having. I used the first batch Warrior from November to mid-January, and then the second batch came out December 17th, and I got my second one in mid-January. So any paddle purchased after December 17th, 2021, should be the second batch with reinforcements. At the time, of watching this video, you probably aren't going to have any problem getting your hands on a second batch. I imagine all of the first batch ones are sold out and gone at this point. Now, the problem is I don't think the issues are fully fixed even in the second batch. We got my brother one for Christmas, which was a second batch, but by the end of January, his warrior was making a horrible clunking sound and the edge guard was coming loose all around the paddle. I 
I also had another friend who had his break in only a week and a half, and his was also a second batch. I've also heard several other reports on the internet of other people having multiple paddles replaced in a short amount of time, but what I will give Diadem credit for is they have been very good at warrantying the paddles. Anytime someone I have known who has submitted a warranty claim, Diadem has sent them a new paddle and didn't even ask them to send the old one back. I know a lot of companies will make you send the old one back so that they can make sure the damage was actually there. Diadem has just been sending people new paddles without any issue. So I think that's really nice because personally, mailing a paddle back is really annoying. The other issue that I said I would report more about was the grit. The Warrior is using grit paint similar to the Ben Johns paddle, and as I'm sure all of you know by now, that grit paint runs out really quickly. Unfortunately, the story is the same with the Warrior. With my first Warrior, the second one, and my brothers, the grit was entirely gone after only a week of using it. It's definitely frustrating to have a paddle be this expensive and have such a basic issue like losing the grit. Now the small bright side is that even after spin testing a brand new warrior and one that completely lost the grit, the numbers for spin actually don't change that much. A brand new warrior for me was about 1450 RPM and after using one with no grit, it was about 1300 to 1350. Losing 100 RPM really isn't that bad, especially when compared to the Ben Johns, which dropped nearly 300 RPM when it lost the grit. But regardless of how much spin you actually lose, it's still annoying that the grit disappears, period. I will say though, after trying paddles like the Electra Model E and Carbon 1 16 millimeter, the extra spin is noticeably better and I'm much more confident driving the ball with those paddles than I am the Warrior. Spin on the Warrior is still pretty good, but it's just not on the same levels as some of these high tier spin paddles. If you're coming from something like an Invicta, which really doesn't have that much spin, the Warrior is gonna feel like a huge upgrade. Everyone who has tried a Warrior and came from a paddle like that, they always think it's a huge improvement, but just be aware that you are going to lose that grip paint and you are going to lose a little bit of spin. On top of that, the face chips quite easily. This is my second Warrior and after a month of use, there's noticeable white marks all over the face. This is really just cosmetic and doesn't seem to affect the play, but it's still annoying to see a paddle this expensive start looking bad in such a short amount of time. But ultimately, it doesn't really matter. This isn't a beauty contest with your paddle on the court, but if that is something you're worried about, then yes, your face is going to get beat up pretty quickly. One final note I want to make is that not every single person has had these warrior breaking issues. I know at least three people who have had their paddle since about December, and theirs all look great and don't have any major issues. So either there's a really bad quality control issue or some of it is up to how the player plays. I personally don't abuse my paddles by throwing or tossing them around. I just play the game. You know, if I have to dig a ball out of the ground, I'm gonna dig it and you know, the edge guard's gonna get beat up, but I'm really not that hard on my paddle. But again, I know some people and their paddles still look fine and they're not having any of the issues. My second one is starting to have the edge guard come up and I anticipate more issues coming soon as I use it more. The only cons I really had outside of the designs were the paddle is definitely slower at the net than other paddles I've used. I don't even think it's so much the weight because even using an 8.5 ounce gearbox feels noticeably faster at the net. I think it's just that the paddle is so thick that there's way more air drag on the paddle. My hand speeds aren't so much slower that it bothers me, but when I switch paddles, I can definitely feel that they're faster when I'm not using the Warrior. So if hand speed is really important to you, then this may not be a paddle that you wanna consider. So overall, I really think this is an amazing paddle and I want to recommend it so badly, but with issues like this, it's just hard to recommend. So it's really gonna be up to you if you're okay with warrantying a paddle or hoping that the one you get doesn't have any of these issues. But like I said, the vast majority of people I have known have ended up having issues. There's been a select few who haven't had any, but that seems to be more in the minority and these problems seem to be more common. So if you're okay with there being a chance that you'll have to warranty your paddle, then I think this is a fantastic paddle to pick up. Like I said, everyone who tries it tends to love this paddle, but if those cons were you, then I absolutely would not recommend this paddle. I've personally seen enough issues at this point that I really don't think they're gonna get fixed, and I've already started messing around with paddles like the Carbon 116 millimeter and the Electra Model E to see how I like them. So far, I find them to be quite good, but I'm still bouncing between those and the Warrior. But all I know is that long-term, I'm really not gonna be able to use the Warrior if it has these reliability issues. 
I love this paddle, but I don't love it enough that I'm going to put up with it breaking all the time. So there you guys go. Those are my full thoughts on the Diadem Warrior. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below, and I will see you in the next video.